Germany's Social Democrats, gearing up for elections. In the interview, SPD Chairman Sigmar Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel, you're the chairman of the Social Democrats, Germany's oldest party. How's the party doing now? For 150, it's doing remarkably well. We're a unique entity and not just here in Germany. We're the oldest democratic party on the continent. There would have been no democracy and no push for freedom without the millions of Social Democrats. And the SPD was involved in freedom-seeking democratic movements in other European countries as well. The SPD was part of the Carnation Revolution in Portugal and the fight for a democratic Spain. That's a proud history. The party's history is one thing, but aren't the polls depressing? The SPD is currently trailing the Christian Democrats, and your Chancellor candidate is even further behind Angela Merkel. How do you plan to catch up? I'm amazed that you would ask such a question on a public television channel. It's not like you're concerned about your low ratings. Quite seriously. We're part of government in a majority of German states. For three years, pundits have consistently said that it's all over for the SPD. Well, frankly, we're doing quite well. And now we're starting a thrilling summer election campaign. It's clear that the Christian Democrats and their coalition partners don't have a majority in Germany, nor have the SPD or the Greens yet. So the question is, how can someone get that majority? It's a good thing. Germany needs an election where the result isn't clear from the outset. Dass wir eine Mehrheit bekommen und es ist ja ganz gut, dass man dafür in Deutschland auch einen Wahlkampf braucht und nicht alles schon vorher klar ist. Wahlkampf ist das Stichwort. How do you plan to proceed in the campaign? Chancellor Merkel has accused the SPD of rolling along and not making any effort. There are no clear features, nothing for people to engage with. Also erstens ist sie im Wesentlichen, glaube ich, jemand, der Europa First of all, I believe that the Chancellor is largely responsible for driving Europe deep into crisis. In Germany, factory orders are way down and economic growth is anemic. The rest of Europe is in a deep recession, along with explosive youth unemployment. And the reason is clear. Chancellor Merkel has forced 27 European countries to accept a policy of pure austerity. The result is economic decline. That hits an export-based economy like ours hard. But worst of all, Germany is neglecting some very important matters that will affect the future of the country in major ways. First of all is the switchover from nuclear energy. Everyone, including employers, complain this government's policies are ruinous. We have to deal with exploding energy costs and real concerns about keeping the power grid stable. Second, we complain about not having enough skilled workers, but we don't invest enough in education. And the third thing is that infrastructure is suffering. That means streets and public transportation systems are falling apart, while the CDU and the Free Democrats promise to lower taxes. That doesn't sit right with me. So I think we have plenty of issues to debate. Und deswegen glaube ich, gibt es genug Themen, über denen sich zu lohnen redet, äh, zu reden lohnt in Deutschland. Aber haben Sie nicht den Eindruck, dass But don't you have the impression that the Chancellor has stolen your thunder by co-opting classic social democratic issues like family issues, immigration and education? Sozusagen abgenommen hat. Wie kommen Sie auf die Idee? Sie ist in Verruf What gives you that idea? She's lost credibility by instituting direct payments to parents of young children, instead of spending it on kindergartens and daycare, where the money is urgently needed. On immigration, Merkel is against people having dual citizenship. Now only a third of our young people with immigrant backgrounds do an apprenticeship. Two thirds of young people don't even do an apprenticeship. And we have a short of skilled labor. But Merkel calls for more immigration rather than making it possible for people already here to get a reasonable education and job training. So I wonder where you get your idea that the Chancellor has adopted our issues. I would applaud her if that was truly the case. She does, I admit, make a good show of doing it.
But you obviously have a problem with it. As long as journalists like you stick to the surface and don't bother with facts, we have a problem. Let's come back to the SPD. The party has always billed itself as the Workers' Party, for people who want to improve the conditions of their lives. I get the impression that core value has changed in recent years. It seems as if the SPD is competing with the Greens over who can better protect the environment, or with the left party to see who can offer more benefits to the down and out. Has the SPD lost sight of its core constituents? I don't think that it's a question of losing sight of our constituency. They also have to deal with environmental problems. Incidentally, it was Willy Brandt who first promised to clear the skies in the industrial Ruhr region. He also brought up the connection between the environment and employment. I think the SPD has different problems. We're still the party of hard-working people. That's why we want to make sure that work is paid reasonably. That's why we want limits on outsourcing and part-time work, so they don't lead to the elimination of full-time jobs. For example, I think that women must be paid better. It's scandalous that they make 20% less or worse than men. Many Germans have lost their faith in politics. Voter turnout is dropping dramatically. We had regional elections and Schleswig-Holstein recently, and voter turnout was under 50 percent. That's a record low number. In parliamentary elections it was only around 70 percent. That's a great difference between conservative voters and social democrats. The conservatives are angry about politics, but they go and vote. Social democrat voters tend to stay at home. If we can bring people back into politics, if we can show them that we understand their lives, then we have a lot of potential. That's not something that can change overnight. The SPD must change, so that we're open to people who aren't party members, but who nonetheless have something to offer. It's important for society as a whole that we don't leave people outside the process. Let's talk about the SPD's candidate for Chancellor, Per Steinbrück. He's made some early missteps. One was mentioning a speed limit on the Autobahn here in Germany. He also proposed an amnesty for tax cheats who turned themselves in. In both cases, you rushed ahead and quickly contradicted him, which left him looking a bit confused. Do you regret the faux pas? Let me address your specific examples. Per Steinbrück and I have both proposed making tax avoidance a petty crime, along with a statute of limitations. We share the same views on that issue, so your example is simply incorrect. As to the speed limit, I'm the head of the SPD and I did what my office required me to do, which was to state the party's position. Do I think he's the right candidate? Per Steinbrück guided us through the worst financial crisis in the history of the German Republic. No one disputes that, not even Angela Merkel. We need someone who will finally regulate the banking sector. We need someone who is highly competent in finance and economic policy. If we don't bring this crazy banking sector under control, we won't be able to achieve our domestic policy goals. We'll always be running along behind the banks, giving them hundreds of billions of euros in bailouts, instead of putting money into schools. Mr. Gabriel, you've just founded an international coalition, the so-called Progressive Alliance. Is this meant to be a counterweight to the Socialist International? And if so, why? It's an addition. There are parties and unions and NGOs that will not join the Socialist International. These groups are still important. They include the Indian People's Congress, the Brazilian PT, 
and the Democrats in the US, groups that are not likely to become part of the international. All the same, they are important partners in the issues we are most concerned about, such as the financial markets, climate change, hunger and world trade. We can't solve these problems alone. We need cooperation and partners, so we need a social network. Also, the Socialist International has been heading in a very bad direction in recent years. We've been trying to reform it for 15 years, but we haven't succeeded. And there are limits to what a social democrat can do. Es gibt einfach Grenzen dessen, was man als Sozialdemokrat machen darf. Ich sage nur mal ein kleines Beispiel. Herr Mubarak. I'll give you one example. Hosni Mubarak, the former Egyptian dictator, was a member of the Socialist International. And they didn't kick him out until he was on his way to jail. I can't agree with that either. Either we'll succeed in reforming it in the next few years, or it will disappear. Sie zu reformieren oder sie wird verschwinden irgendwann. Last week you celebrated the 150th anniversary of the SPD's founding. Ferdinand Lassalle founded the party on May 23, 1863. Can the party still learn something from its founding father? Yes, for example, people's origins have nothing to do with how they act. He was a rich man and yet he championed the cause of children who lived in coal mining areas. He also taught us not to pursue unreachable goals, but to try to improve people's lives step by step through the democratic process. But he died in a duel over a woman, and that's one example we shouldn't follow. Mr. Gabriel, thanks for this interview.